Alexa, what time is it? It's 8.01 a.m. Okay, if I get up now, I can take my meds, brush my teeth, throw in a baseball cap, and make it to Starbucks by 8.25. That's my routine. Starbucks will be packed when I get there, but I have observed that because first period at Fairfax High, which is only four blocks away, starts at 8.30 a.m., every weekday at precisely 8.25 a.m., all the soon-to-be hipsters grab their backpacks, skateboards, inventing non-fat soy mochaccinos, scramble down mowers to school, and the whole place clears out. I can actually get a table. You can actually hear and feel the entire staff let out a collective breath of relief every morning at 8.26. I love being there for this moment. The moment the energy shifts. It's like being part of a secret club. Like I belong. Yeah. I belong here. Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. The one place where my newly neurodivergent post-stroke brain can somehow hyper-focus and I can get some really good writing done. Alexa, what's the weather out? It's 49 degrees and cloudy. You can expect rain today. The National Weather Service has issued an aerial flood warning for Fairfax. What the fuck is an aerial flood? <laughs> an aerial flood, Alexa, that was rhetorical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Michael, I don't always catch your sarcasm. Yeah, you and the rest of the world. <laughs> well, it's not raining yet. So I grab my stuff and I make my daily trek to Starbucks. Okay. I can do this. Out the front door and down four steps. Turn right at the sidewalk, past two buildings, and get to the corner. From here, it's only four blocks. Oakwood to Rosewood, Rosewood to Clinton, Clinton to Stanley, Stanley to Melrose, and that's where I find Starbucks. It's only four blocks away, but I've had to memorize the route, and I also have to count the blocks and say each street name out loud so I don't get lost. Before my stroke, I did this walk every day without even thinking about it, without ever paying attention. For years, I just took for granted that I could leave my house and go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. And while I am incredibly grateful that the stroke left me with my life, it did take my vision. So now driving to another coffee shop is no longer an option. Now, instead of taking the walk for granted, I take my life in my hands when I leave the house. Between the cars running stop signs, the dogs walking their humans, and the tree roots growing up, over, and through the sidewalk, the four-block walk to Starbucks is about as much as I'm willing to risk. The walks are not far, but along with my vision, my executive functioning, and my memory, the stroke also knocked out my napping ability, and there have been multiple times where I have a full-fledged panic attack from getting lost walking by myself in my own neighborhood. But I can do this. It's important. The stroke took my vision, I refuse to let it take my independence, too. Every walk I take to Starbucks by myself is an act of defiance. A moment I get to fight for myself. And there's nothing I love more than a chance to fight for myself. Alexa, play Tub Thumping by Chapa Mama. Yeah. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never gonna keep me down. The stroke did not break me. Just the opposite. In fact, it cracked me open. It unleashed something in me, lit a fire in me. Decades of my life, life wasted on being a people pleaser. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No more. I almost died apologizing. It is time for me to take up space. Before the pandemic, this Starbucks had always had plenty of tables, plenty of places to sit, um, where, I, where I could sit down and shut out the noise of the world for an hour or so and get some really good work done. It became my safe space for those first couple of years right after my stroke and right before COVID. Even though I can't see much, I know the space well enough that I can make my way around without incident, find an empty table and sit down for an hour or so and just write every day. That's another one of my routines. Routine is really important when you have a brain injury because aside from just creating a sense of normalcy and stability after my world had been turned upside down, Setting and sticking to a routine has actually accelerated my recovery by activating neuroplasticity, which in turn has boosted my attention, focus, and executive functioning, which is really just a fancy way of saying that setting and sticking to a routine makes me feel better. Uh, I had just settled into this routine when the pandemic came along and said, oh, don't get too comfortable, boo. <laughs> <laughs> but 
first the Starbucks closed. Then you could only pick up coffee to go. Then they finally reopened and took away half the tables and spread the other tables out to socially distance everyone. It was the right thing to do, but now there are fewer places to sit. I have one table that I love. One. It's a high top against the wall by the front door. I try to sit there because I can sit with my left side against the wall, and that way no one can ever approach me from the left. Even though I have double vision now, I've lost most of my peripheral vision. I can't see anything below or to the left of midnight. It's incredibly disconcerting when anyone approaches me from the left. Because I can't see them coming, when someone just says hello out of nowhere or pops into view or worse, touches me, they often scare the crap out of me. I've been known to jump, scream, flail, and knock trays out of waiters' hands. Yeah. But with my left side touching the black brick wall, no one can do that to me here. This table is perfect. It keeps me safe. I'm standing in line, waiting to order. And I think I can see that someone in a bright orange sweater is sitting at my table. Ah, shit. Yeah. I squint, as if that will make a difference. But I can't see or make up much else about them. Just that bright pop of orange. Oh, well. I wait for my coffee. I, I, I take my coffee and I wait for my muffin. Oh, shit. Cody's working behind the pickup window today. He never recognizes me or remembers my name. He knows the name of and flirts with every dog and twink that walk through the door. <laughs> and if he doesn't recognize the only guy he has seen walking in here with a white cane every day for the last four years. I now have prosopagnosia, which is also known as face blindness. My brain can no longer process, recognize, or understand faces. But because I've taught myself compensations, like recognizing people's voices, picking up on people's energies, or memorizing what people are wearing, I get by. I know Cody's voice. I can feel his energy. And I can see exactly how taut his robed t-shirt sleeves are stretched over uh, his dress uh, from the gym uh, biceps and triceps. <laughs> <laughs> that I can see. <laughs> I'm face blind, and I can recognize him. He can see fine, but he looks right through me, like I'm invisible. Michael, blueberry muffin for Michael. Morning, Cody, I say as I walk to the counter. He hands me the muffin without ever looking up. It's fine. I'm not here to make friends. I'm just here to pick up my muffin. <laughs> oh, I, I think I can see that my table is empty now. Awesome. I grab the hot coffee in one hand and grab some napkins in the, and wrap the lip of the paper bag that the muffin is in and wrap it around the handle of my cane with the other. I have done this balancing act before. I make my way over to the table, put down my coffee and muffin, take off my backpack, put it on the chair on the right, the chair I can see. Hey! Somebody yells. I, I turn and I notice a pop of bright orange coming towards me. I'm sitting there! The faceless head sticking out of the bright orange sweater barks, frothing with hostile condescension. That's what that means! What what means? I'm sitting there! That's my jacket! That's what that means! What jacket? Right there! Right in front of you! He points to a black jacket on the back of the black chair on the left of the black table against the black wall. The chair I can't see. Oh, um, oh. Okay, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what that means. When somebody leaves, he says a little more aggressively, when somebody leaves their jacket on a chair, it means the table is taken. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Sorry, I say as I start to walk away. Thanks for being so polite about it. I throw it back in before I can stop myself. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, thanks for being so blind about it. <laughs> okay. Human beings are made up of 60% water, and right now, every drop in my body is boiling. I start to walk away. No. Huh? Fuck that. <laughs> Alexa, I say to myself, play tub thumping. <laughs> Louder! <laughs> I hear the bagpipes in my head, and I stop. I get knocked down! I turn. But I get up again, I say. You're never going to keep me down. Excuse me. <laughs> he doesn't acknowledge me. You're never going to keep me down. Excuse me, I say again. He still doesn't acknowledge me. You're never going to keep me down. Hey! Oh, that got his attention. That even got Cody to look up and notice. Cody and everyone else in Starbucks. <laughs> look at my white cane. I am blind. I didn't see your fucking coat. Have a nice day, I say, and I stop off to find another seat. I am shaking uncontrollably. 
The challenge of going through life with an invisible disability is hard enough, but the indignity and vitriol that go along with it are too much to handle sometimes. It's the people that honk their horns and yell at me as I'm trying to cross the street, or the people in the grocery store that just blurt out, can you get out of the way? Or the people that walk side by side toward me, taking up the entire sidewalk, and instead of shifting one in front of the other as they pass, they keep coming at me. Side by side, thinking nothing of making the guy with the cane step off the sidewalk and out into the street so they can pass. I am sick of having to apologize. I'm exhausted from having to introduce myself to people by explaining what happened to me first. I am worn down by having to lead with my disability. Can't I just exist without having to make an excuse or apologize for myself? Can't I just be? Uh, it's no one's fault. I, I, know, I know. Including this guy. You can't see an invisible disability. That's why they call them invisible. Oh, but you look fine, people say. It's not like you're in a wheelchair. I can't <laughs> bite my tongue. But this time, I threw kerosene and sarcasm on the fire. Alexa did warn me about my sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now sitting at the long communal table, the table that I hate, because inevitably someone will sit on my left and they won't see them, and I'll, they'll say something and scare the crap out of me, and I'll jump and knock something over or bump into them, and I immediately have to explain my situation and apologize for my existence. My agency has been stripped of me. I don't get to keep my personal information personal anymore. I have to share it with everyone I come in contact with in order to abide by the basic social constructs that privileged, able-bodied, straight white men have established for this world. And yes, I'm well aware that I meet three of those five criteria. <laughs> Do the math. <laughs> but sometimes I don't want to deal with, with abiding by ableist constructs, so I choose not to sit at the communal table most days. But I'm shaking, and I need to sit down, and this is the first place I can find. I'm trying to hold back tears. I don't want to cry in the middle of Starbucks. I, I already made a scene. I, I, I don't want to be that guy. I come in here every day. Be cool, Michael, be cool. But the tears refuse to be restrained. Hey, I hear someone say, oh shit. There's a pop right on her, standing right in front of me. Please, God, no. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't want to continue this fight. I am exhausted. I don't have any fight left in me. I'm sorry for being an asshole, he says. Would you like the table? What? Uh, no. no. Th thank you. I, I was. I was an asshole. I, I didn't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Th th thank you, I say, and I look back down, this time really trying to hold back the tears. He walks back to his table, and I go back to typing. I try to breathe. of where I'm sitting, I am facing and staring directly at his table, yeah. and he's staring directly at me, <laughs> and he can see me typing. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> he just came over and apologized for being an asshole because I told him that I'm blind. See, here's the thing. I'm not blind. Um, but not, not technically. I mean, but I just told him that I am, and now he can see me typing. I mean, he's got to be wondering how I should be typing if I'm blind. I'm, uh, Okay, don't 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 look at the keyboard or, or the screen. Uh, just stare straight ahead and keep typing. And don't give yourself an extra arm. Or so you have to keep just keep staring straight ahead. Oh, but he just came over and apologized and even referred to himself as an asshole because I told him I'm blind. I'm not blind. I'm not even legally blind. My neurological ophthalmologist tells me that I'm illegally legally blind, meaning that I'm basically legally blind, but I don't fit all of the many criteria in California to be classified as legally blind, so I can't claim it or get any benefits. I can still see well. Just just not much. My visual fields have been reduced by 75%. I have no depth perception. I have double vision, and I'm face blind. But I can't explain all that in one caustic clapback. I don't have the energy or the desire to explain all that to a faceless pop of bright orange that I don't even know. He says, thanks for being so blind by the story. I say, I am blind. <laughs> but now you can see me typing. Ah! OK, just stare straight ahead. Don't look at him. Look past him like he's invisible. Let's see how he likes it. <laughs> I'm typing right now, and all I care about is that I look fierce as hell doing it. <laughs> oh, but then I start to beat myself up. He just apologized, Michael. You should apologize too. Go over and say, I'm sorry. I honestly didn't see your jacket. I wasn't trying to steal your table. And then just say, this whole vision loss thing is relatively new to me, and I'm still getting used to it. And sometimes I just get rattled, and I didn't mean to react the way I did. I I'm sorry. That's what I keep telling myself to do. But I don't do it. I know that I should, but I don't want to. I'm still shaking, and I just want him gone. And I don't 
I don't want to let him off the hook. So this time, instead of apologizing for my mistake, instead of apologizing for my disability, instead of apologizing for my existence, I'm just going to sit here, continue typing, and take up space. Woo! Yeah. 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 Yeah.